in uh, in 10.2 uh, here we have a normal distribution with a sample mean of we'll call it 554 rounded off 554 and the data itself distributes according to a standard deviation of 484 that's the uh, standard so if we model the data as a normal distribution we get this now we have a mean for that as i just noted let me go ahead and put the mean in of uh, 554 for now I'll just call it x equals <laughs> 554 sorry there's a the mean this is the data here um I'll make the data green just for fun so there's the uh, mean and uh, the standard deviation, uh, 44. That gives us some idea of the spread of where the airplanes are likely to land if they're thrown over and over again. Now, that mean, if I throw them again, I will get a different distribution. But the mean of the new distribution will distribute more narrowly. In fact, the mean of the new distribution will distribute normally around 554 still, but it will distribute according to the standard error of 80.7. Let me round that off to 81. So you can see here, I'll better shift that color around, say uh, make it orange or something. That's a much taller, narrower, normal distribution. It's still normal, but it's just taller and uh, more narrow. It's hard to see now that the data is uh, itself a normal distribution it looks flattened out here but it's actually still a normal distribution if i go back here i can see that so even if i throw these airplanes again this mean is going to move around uh, uh, uh normally and 95 percent of the time it's going to be between um the mean that 554 minus uh, the t critical times uh, that standard error, the 81 I just did, and the mean plus the uh, T critical times that same standard error. So no matter how many times I throw the airplanes, 95% of the means that I generate will land between uh, those two values that you see there on the screen. I haven't actually calculated them, but I could probably go figure them out. One's up around, oh, there's that one. That one's at 709, and this one's at uh, just around uh, 398, roughly speaking. And uh, we're at about 95%. You can see that down here. 90, close to 95. I have to trim it a little bit. I'm a little bit off on this bottom. So the issue is, could this population mean for this be 560? Well, let's look at where 560 is. Let's just throw in 560. That purple line is 560. Now, it's really hard to see the difference between that and the sample mean. The point is, there is no difference. That difference between those two lines is actually 0.07 standard errors. What do I mean by 0.07? Let me do it this way. The difference, I'll do it the positive way so it's easier to see, is 0.07. There's a 0.07 appearing. That's the 560 minus the 554. You can see down here, this is the 560 line here, coming in at 560. And this is the uh, 554 line. The difference between them is 0.07 standard errors. Remember, this big orange area and that we're looking at under the curve, that's 2.0 plus or minus 2.03 standard errors. So, key point here is the sample mean I got is really on top of the population mean. Now, the T statistic is this thing here, the 0.07. That is a T statistic down there. And the T critical, which was calculated in the spreadsheet, is that 2.03 that I used to calculate the 95% confidence interval, which is bigger, seven cents or two two dollars and three cents. Two dollars and three cents is bigger. So on the question number seven, is the t, t statistic bigger than t critical? Is seven cents more than two dollars and three cents? No way. 
Remember that's the T critical. And I can't do the T critical here as far as I know. I don't have a I don't have a T inverse function available to me. So that one I'll just have to I'll leave that way. But the T critical is uh, 2.03. So the T statistic is not. So number seven is no. And that means we can re we fail to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there's no difference in her. There's no difference. These lines are on top of each other. On top of each other. You want to see how on top of each other they are. Go back and look at the data. There's the data normal. This, those lines are indistinguishable. So they're, they're right on top of each other. This was not true in the previous homework. In the previous homework in 10.1 we had a much lower uh, uh, edge here than what we've got and we come back and shrink this back um, it was much lower down and so we we did not include 560 it ended just short of the upper bound ended just short of 560 but in this homework we failed to reject is it significantly different no could yes but you, you always have to somehow get some visualization in your mind of how these things what these things look like that 203 is the spread from the sample mean up to the upper bound is 2.03 standard errors up to this boundary up there. That's 2.03 standard errors. In other words, eight, the standard error is 81, so a couple of those is 162. We're 162 above our 554. And the actual population mean is only 0 0.07 standard errors above. So number seven, no. T statistic is not bigger than the, the T critical value.